Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, continuing our deep dive into this Oklahoma Sooners program, heading into spring practice, fall camp in the 2024 season. Last week, we took a dive into that offensive line. This week, we have a defensive line that I think can be extremely good in 2024. A ton of young talent that you look at that 2024 year and really expect some of those guys to take that step. What excites me the most is you saw some improvement from that 2022 year to the 2023 year. But more importantly, I think a lot of Oklahoma fans feel this way. I certainly feel this way after watching some of the film back, looking at the numbers. There's some still, still some meat left on the bone in terms of what this Oklahoma defensive line can be in 2024. Brent Venables has put a lot of prioritization on this Oklahoma defensive line, right? What they did in the 2024 class, what they've done in the transfer portal, he wants this to be a dominant unit. And I think he's continuing to get this roster right so this Oklahoma defensive line can dominate. In 2024, I expect another step. want to do two things. One, talk about what we saw on the film in 2023. Talk about some things we'd like to see them get better at in 2024. But more importantly, have that conversation of who are going to be the guys in this Oklahoma defensive line heading into 2024. Before we get into it, just want to say thank you to you guys. And a sincere, I can't thank you guys enough for all the support you guys have shown. Whether we're talking this program in the transfer portal, on the recruiting trail, I've had a blast doing it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support. If you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And more importantly, for these deep dives, like I learned a ton from you guys in the comment section. Would love to hear some names I might be sleeping on, some names that you expect to make that jump in 2024. We'll chop it up there. And without further ado, and let's get into this one. And I want to start with what we saw from this unit in 2023. And that starts with a massive improvement from that 2022 year. And you know Brent Venables, after that 2022 season wrapped up, he looked at that defensive line and said, we have to get this right heading into 2023. He attacks the transfer portal, brings in a lot of guys who were very productive for Oklahoma in 2023. But you look at the 2024 season, you're looking at some of the guys he recruited out of high school to be the guys that are going to be difference makers for Oklahoma. Now, some things that I would like to see them really work on is one, that killer instinct in the pass rush, especially from that Ezra edge rusher position. You had guys like Dejon Terry and Isaiah Co really be difference makers on the inside. I felt like the edge rusher position, guys like Ethan Downs, maybe left a little bit on the table in terms of how much they can impact games. You take a look at some of the numbers. I mean, Ethan Downs led the team with only four and a half sacks. Not many edge rushers had over a 12% pass rush win rate. They only sacked the quarterback 4.6% of dropbacks. That was 111th in the country. And so you look at this Oklahoma defensive line, and I think they were a little bit more productive and had a little bit more of an impact on the game than those numbers show. I think the pressure and disruption was certainly there. But how do you play elite level defense? You convert on those negative plays. You turn those pressures, you turn those into sacks right? Kind of like drive killing sacks. And you like to see Oklahoma kind of capitalize on some of that a little bit more. It felt like at times when this Oklahoma defense struggled, I look back to that Oklahoma state game, probably being the best example where it's just, you're not impacting the quarterback enough. You're not collecting enough negative plays in that pass rush. And I think for Oklahoma to take that step into 2024, you got to finish some of those pass rushes up. You got to get some of those sacks. And when you force a team into third and long, you need your edge rushers pinning their ears back and really impacting the game. So that's really what I'm looking for heading into 2024. Again, a unit that showed, in my mind, just so much improvement. And I think you're excited to see another step in the right direction heading into 2024, which gets us to the, 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 the more fun conversation. And that is, who are the guys that are going to be difference makers for this Oklahoma defensive line? heading into 2024. And I want to start with that edge rusher position. And I want to highlight a guy that just kind of flew under the radar because he was dealing with injuries, kind of not getting as many snaps as I think a lot of Oklahoma fans wanted. And that's R. Mason Thomas. I mean, when R. Mason Thomas was healthy during that year, I thought in Arizona, he really looked like a difference maker. And this is a guy that can be an all-conference pass rusher. And so getting R. Mason Thomas healthy, he is still young, kind of making that next step going into year three. I really expect him to be. I if I were to if I were a betting man, I'd probably take R. Mason Thomas in terms of leading this team in sacks heading into that 2024 year. Another guy that I have my eyes on is just 
um, maybe getting back to the form we saw him in in 2022. And the, I think the the cool part is we know Ethan Downs has that in him, right? During that 2022 year, a true game wrecker, a true difference maker. He wasn't bad in 2023, but I think you want to see him get back to that 2022 year. And Ethan Downs, a guy that still had 22 quarterback hurries, a 10.6% pass rush run rate, all solid numbers. I think if you're Oklahoma and you want to take that step, Ethan Downs is going to be a guy that does that. And I love what Ethan Downs does in terms of how he gets after the passer. I mean, heavy hands, wants to go speed the power, wants to just go through tackles. And I think he balances out a guy like R. Mason Thomas, who has that burst and that special bend in terms of winning with speed. Now, another guy you're probably expecting to take that step. And it, I might take back my R. Mason Thomas prediction because if P.J. Adebari puts it together going into year two, and we kind of knew, I mean, covering P.J. Adebari when he committed to Oklahoma a couple of years ago, I mean, this was a guy that you knew as a true freshman would probably have some, I don't know if you call it growing pains, but some work to do in terms of getting that body right and learning the sport a little bit better to excel at the college football level. And I thought you saw him continue to put that together, had a really good year as a freshman, nine quarterback hurries, 14% pass rush win rate. He's going to get more opportunity. They're going to lean on him a little bit more in that 2024 year. PJ Adebare, R. Mason Thomas, Ethan Downs, three guys that I think have the potential to really be difference makers. And you're looking for them to take that step. And I think Brent Venables looked at this roster and said, that's not enough. We're going to go bring in a guy like Caden Wooler coming from Miami of Ohio, who, I mean, the conversation around him is he's got the physical traits to excel at the SEC level. He's got the length. He has the power in his hands, probably just needs to refine himself a little bit more. But I think the, the most exciting part about him is you know what he can do at the college football level against college competition. Now, making that step from the MAC to the SEC, that's a big step. But this was a guy that dominated. They're at, at Miami of Ohio, 43 quarterback hurries, a 15% pass rush win rate. But the, why I'm so optimistic about him making that transition is the physical traits aren't lacking. I mean, this is a guy with a ton of length, a ton of power in his hands, wants to go speed the power, wants to use that length and get his hands on opposing tackles, is a really good run defender as well, really looking for Caden Willard to also take that step. And you start evaluating that edge position with the four guys we just talked about. That is a deep and very talented group with a very high ceiling of what they could be at that in that 2024 season heading into the SEC. A couple other names you're keeping an eye on, obviously Trace Ford, a veteran guy that I don't know if he's going to be the, the difference maker for Oklahoma, but a very, very capable rotational piece. And you go out and bring in some freshmen who I, I think have a chance to play early. Daniel Okoye is a guy that has freak traits that I don't know if he plays early in that 2024 season, but towards the end of that season, I could certainly see a guy that's putting it together, dominated during his all-star game. Like, I think the bigger question was for him is he's playing at a small school. Can he, can he make that transition? He's got the traits to, and we saw him do it against some really, really good high school players. He's a guy I have my eye on. Now you look at the inside, and I think the story is getting a guy like DeJon Terry back, who I think, I mean, Isaiah Coe was very impressive. DeJon Terry was phenomenal for Oklahoma as well. When I mean, you take a look at what he did in the run game, over 10 run stops, his average depth of tackle, 0.9 yards down the field. This is a guy that is not necessarily going to stuff the stat sheet, but is going to sit on double teams, be really good in the run game. And I think you can say a lot of those things for Jacob Lacey as well. So you look at some of those veteran guys on the inside, although they're probably not going to be the guys that have 10 plus sacks, 15 plus tackles for a loss, they're going to do their job and stop the run and hold up on double teams, allowing those linebackers, guys like Danny Stutzman, Kip Lewis, Jaron Kanick to really come downhill and be difference makers. And then you look at some guys that I think could really be difference makers and you got to go to five-star David Stone. I mean, it is rare and I'm not going to go into this season saying David Stone needs to be the guy because they have guys like Lacey and DeJon Terry. David Stone is a little bit different in terms of the size, the speed, the athleticism, the power he has in his hands. I mean, you, you go turn on the film, you go see some of those one-on-ones from the All-American games. This dude is a little bit different. And I think it's rare to have freshmen play early, especially on the inside of that defensive line. David Stone's a rare breed. So I would really, I'm going to have my kind of ears to the spring practice notes and just kind of seeing what is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> what is David Stone looking like as he's going into 2024 as a true freshman? Another guy 
that I think Oklahoma will be able to rely on uh, in 2024 is Jaden Jackson. Now, Jaden Jackson, probably a little bit more similar to the build of Dejon Terry and Jacob Lacey in terms of a guy that, again, not going to stuff the stat sheet, but physically, I mean, very capable of eating those double teams. Very, Maybe I'm selling him a little bit short because you go turn on the IMG Academy film, and this is a guy that's a phenomenal athlete. was sought after by pretty much every Power 5 program across the country. Maybe he can be that difference maker, but at the very least, you're getting a fire hydrant build that – kind of can hold up at the point of attack, eat those double teams. And again, that's what you want. You want guys on the inside that are not necessarily making the flashy plays, but are guys that are doing their job, winning at the point of attack, allowing those linebackers to play downhill, play free, play clean. That's kind of what I'm looking for, guys like Jacob Lacey, Dejon Terry, Jaden Jackson, and then David Stone is potentially that game wrecker on the inside that can really cause some havoc. Now, I think you're you're in a good spot where you have some veteran guys that you trust up there. And then if David David Stone or Jaden Jackson are really ready to go, then you're you're kind of saying, all right, let's let's let let's let them off the leash a little bit and go let them be impact guys their freshman year. But you're not necessarily relying on freshmen to come in and, and be guys right away. And so you look at this defensive line as a whole, and I think one, going back to my point, is you saw a massive step in the right direction. During that 2022 year, or during the 2023 year, from the 2022 year, I want to see another step, but I want to see those guys at that edge position, the R. Mason Thomases, the P.J. Adebaris, those guys to be a little bit more difference makers in 2024. And that's an exciting proposition because you have a lot of young guys. When you're returning, you know, you take a guy like Rondo Bothridge, who was awesome at Wake Forest, came in and played very well for Oklahoma. You kind of knew what he was. Did you really think he was going to take a massive step from his fifth year to his sixth year? Probably not. Guys like R. Mason Thomas and P.J. Adebarri, they're going to take steps. They still have a lot of development from their body to take place, but more importantly, technique as well. And so I'm really excited to see this Oklahoma defensive line, especially at that edge rusher position, potentially take that step heading into 2024, a unit that I'm certainly going to have my eyes on. I think Brent Venables has continued to want to retool, and I think – the most exciting part is these are his guys coming in now, right? The guys that he recruited out of high school, the guys that have been with the program for a couple of years, very excited for this unit. We got the offensive skill position next week to take a dive into. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys again. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. More importantly, would love to hear from you guys in the comment section in terms of players you think I might be sleeping on that are going to break out. Appreciate y'all, and we'll talk to you guys later. Peace.